the great thing following a feature group this way as we are, you really get to see and feel the speed of the game and how long it takes to get round and how long individual players take. We saw, of course, earlier this year, the shot clock masters in Austria, just how quickly they can play when they put their minds to it. Interesting, Russell Knox, who's not a long hitter particularly, is going with a driver. Yeah, interested to see him hit and drive it. Obviously looking to take the right-hand bunker out of play and if it ends up in the right rough. Should be okay. Much lower ball flight than we see other players only 80 feet through the air. But it looks a little out of sorts so far, Russell Knox. Yes, we've seen this the, the height of the flight on the PGA Tour quite a bit, and I've always thought it was quite dull actually. But it's very meaningful here. You're seeing such a big difference in trajectory. The low flighted one, the high flight. Now it's going to run. That gets back to hasn't got the same club head speed as the other two boys. You've got it, the guys that really hit it high have got tremendous club head speed. And that's why it gets up there. And that's why in, in the wind you've got to try and slow down. Take X club and hit it softly to keep it down. Didn't realise you were so tech savvy, Hutch. Uh, uh, I've been playing for a long time. <laughs> However, it's got a lot more technical than when you played, Hutch. Certainly. And, and spin rates and what they can do now with the ball spinning off drivers, low spin rates and angles of attack and trajectories and all the rest of it gets highly technical. It's a little bit tough to sort of help me out these days. I can't measure my club head speed. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't register. It still goes straight. Thoroughly enjoying himself, chatting away with Tiger. They kept getting improved there, isn't it? After that opening birdie, but <laughs> I'll have a small wager with you now that brain beats brawn on Sunday evening. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm <laughs> You've got to be tremendously patient and very, very good to play, approach the way a Tiger's playing. You, you've got to have such faith in yourself that you can produce the shots, lay back and still knock it on the green, get the odd chance to make a putt. And of course, if you don't drop shots, you don't have to make so many birdies, but it is, you have to have absolute belief in what you're doing. And he has. He surely has. I followed him round on course at, at Hoylake and I thought, what's he doing? And the, actually the same at Muirfield. He's laying it so far back, leaving himself shots of over 200 yards into the green, doing it deliberately. He's got no idea at this point. He doesn't know what he's doing. Was my face red? <laughs> of course he won. Six-year-old Matsuyama, five feet eleven inches, just a, a good, strong, athletic build. <laughs> so pro in 2013. Eight times a winner on the Japan Tour. Mainly before he went to the PGA Tour, but did win the Japan Open and the Taiho Masters in 2016. He's won the Taiho Masters back in 2011 as an amateur. a bit odd that the 
playing when the green is occupied, but of course it's the only double green on the course. The 14th on the other side is still being occupied by players. Quite a poor shot from Matsuyama, short side himself. That'll be a tricky up and down coming out of the long grass. Not a lot of room to work with. Tiger in perfect position to get at this right pin. Do you think he knew how close he was to the ditch? Probably not. I think he's been quite lucky actually. But no doubt he'll take advantage. Down. Get down. Slice. Down. Yeah. Oh, come on, Tiger. It's two yards too long. Vintage Tiger Woods. Immediately calling for it to get down. Quite hard to fault that. Uh, talk about staying in a shot. I mean, that is absolutely perfect. So different to the old flashing hips of 18 years ago. Now he's got a good chance of getting up and down from there. Beautifully balanced all the way through his swing. Just looks un under full control of what he's doing at this moment. Oh, expecting a big week from Tiger Woods if he keeps swinging the club the way he is over these first four holes. And the news will get around. Caddy might have an easier job as well this week if he, has, if he can keep the driver in the bag. Notice that stat in the background over 15,000 players into the championship. No, not this championship. Not this, huh? So it's an RNA thing for amateurs. Uh, uh, just interesting. I just saw it in the background. I thought it meant this championship. Just concentrate on the foreground. <laughs> I will from now on. <laughs> It'd be quite hard to. You couldn't really say how many people entered for this because they have that regional qualifying all around the world so just regular tournaments where if you finish in the top three qualifying spots you get in a sort of thickish line here but not too bad for Matsu Army he played a lovely shot at the second and went and missed the cutter on left again really played nice a good rhythm in that so stayed down lovely Lovely soft hands, Hutch, get the club and loft underneath the ball. Is that Avon does that? <coughs> Whatever takes your fancy, Julian. <laughs> it's the bizarre thing playing up here. I remember at, at Loch Lomond I first discovered it, where the midges were absolutely <laughs> awful. The Avon sort of body lotion or whatever it was they, they recommended. The, the midges didn't like it. Just spray yourself in that and they seem to stay away. <coughs> Tip from the top, Hutch. I just don't want to go with the midges. <laughs> just stick with he, me, Hutch, because they love me. Okay, I will too. Because <laughs> Here we go. Oh, good roll. He's rolling the ball very nice enough to go settle down. I, I still believe he could end up with a decent round play, Russell.
We had three runs in the 60s last week in Scotland and then a 75 in the final round. So, as Graham said, maybe just ran out of steam a bit. You were saying about Tiger Woods when he was in his hair day and re reading the greens as well as he did. One thing that I found out watching him is that he never took his eyes off the line as he prowled around the hole and back around to the ball. His eyes would always stay on the on the actual putt that he's got, trying to get any undulation that he could find. Not that there'll be much undulation in this one I think this is just a firm straight putt try and keep it low have you tried doing that? I've tried it I can't say I've succeeded but I think it's something that we can all learn from Birdie number two. Moves into a share of seventh place. Lots of players on that mark. Yeah, we're just a two par fives and three par threes, par of 71. There's 13 par fours out there. He's already buried two of them. Thirty-seven players under par at the moment, but I'm surprised that somebody hasn't gone a bit lower. I thought we might see a 65 or a 64 today, especially from the early starters. Uh, well, you might see that still, but uh, I mean, the course is still, but it's still played very, very well to get round under par. I don't mind it's running, it's playing short and everything, but to control the ball, to keep it in play all the time, is not an easy ask. It's still got, you know, it sets problems. Sometimes different problems, it might be normally, but there are problems. If I want to be surprised, don't stop me being surprised, please. I won't. The fifth hole. The fifth hole, you just got to avoid those two bunkers. Most players will lay back from the two bunkers. Second shot is kind of blind to the front right half of the green but where the pin location is today at the back difficult pin to get to guarded well by the bunker in the middle left hand side but does run off to the right so very difficult to get to the back pin from what we've seen earlier on it's one where you really want to be hitting off the fairway so that you can fly it all the way to the back and stop it there if you have to run it up it's much harder more tough as a hole they've got that little burn that goes across the fair we've got to try and lay up short of that there are a couple of nasty bunkers if you get in there's no chance of a recovery if you get in those off the tee your history almost playing backwards so i'm not surprised that it's the fourth hardest hole at the golf course and that green is a devil yeah the green's really tough especially where this pin is today it was the fifth hardest hole on <laughs> average over the four rounds in 2007 average 4.33 green is beautifully bunkered there on the left and that huge slope all the way and it's enormously long green 58 or 56 paces and uh, the hole is back there 45 it's the top of a very steep hill
that burned about 308 yards, so but it's laid way back of that, isn't it? It's not a swing or a rhythm that you would train, I don't believe, is it? Because it, it, it's relatively slow to the pause at the top, and then it's quite violent from there. Not very rhythmical. That's true. Yeah, if you get the body moving too quickly and the arms are still up at the top, it's very really difficult to synchronize both movements. Like I said earlier, I think if the wind blows, then it's even more difficult. That looks like a three wood here, or maybe a five wood here for Russell Knox. He has to thread this one very carefully. He looks a little wary. Did you see that um, story? Didn't see where it finished. It looked a little anxious, as if it was going towards the right-hand bunker. <laughs> it's his nickname, Opportunity. <laughs> Phil Red. It's actually Rue. It is, yeah. It was in Kanga. I did my homework. <laughs> it's worse than my tenth. Opportunity knock, can you believe it? Well, he's four behind Tiger at the moment. He would be very disappointed if it stays like that after 18. I do think Tiger was a touch lucky with his tee shot. He didn't go into the burn, but fully capitalised on that fortune on the fourth. We were talking how far back he was laying the ball at Hoylake in 2006. And I was reading what Padraig Harrington was having to say, that Tiger was the best at doing it because... He used to be able to fly the ball so high, using a softer ball and get the ball to sit down softly. And he said that it may be more difficult in 2018 to be able to do that with the ball being a little bit different. But over these first four holes, it looks like he's managing quite nicely. Yeah, the thing is, there are, there are so many balls that they have the option of using now. And even, you know, you look at the, the Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X, they've got the latest generation but some players are still using balls from eight nine years ago they've got so many different varieties and different compressions I don't mean they were made eight or nine years ago but ones of that style I'm sure Tiger does plenty of work testing to find the right ball to suit his equipment and ball flight well it's extraordinary when you think about it i mean you think about jack nicholas jack nicholas really changed nothing including his coach throughout his career he's had three different coaches changed his swing time and again has been through all the dramas that he's been through now looking after himself been through major changes of equipment obviously with the big nike contract that was probably the biggest of the lot it is you might say it's unwise, perhaps, but it is extraordinary and it just shows what a talent he is. Unwise to accept that enormous Nike contract. 
And his bank balance will be okay, Julian, as well. You'd think so, yeah. No problems for Matsuyama. I was surprised to see him with his hands in his pockets there for a bit. Do you think the tip just dropped a little bit? We can't really tell here, but... I think he was just checking out the new contract, probably. Ah. Such a cynic. Good look at that green, as I say. It's, it's very long. 56 paces deep, and the slopes up there to where the hole is cut is very severe. You don't, you don't want to get in that bunker on the left there, the second one. Uh, the pin is only cut three above that big ridge. There is a little bit of a backstop behind the hole, which uh, helped the players, especially in the conditions that they're playing in today. They'll be able to fly it all the way. No breeze to worry the player. This is the one shot that we'll see Tiger and how well he is swinging it and playing. You see, he's got 198 yards here. That's an awful long way in a, in a relatively short hole for these guys. They laid back so far. And, but this is not the easiest shot in the world for anybody. The question is, can he land it on the, the top level and hold it there? Oh, Tiger, God. Lucky day, I think. Oh, there she goes. With her upturned nose. It's not the worst place to be, but like I was trying to say, that was going to be interesting to see how Tiger would take that shot on. That's where Ricky Fowler ended up earlier on. You almost have to putt past the hole from there or risk coming back to your feet. Knox will try and run it up. It was a much shorter iron. It's about the green, but boy, if all coming out the rough, it still stopped so quickly, Stormy. It did sit down really quick. I was quite surprised. That it looked like he was trying to just run it up. It seemed like a pretty lofty club for that. It could have taken a bit less loft, maybe. Hard shot for Matsuyama. Yeah, he's got about 13 paces at the front of the green, and and another 45 to the hole. Good clean contact. And well done. Go to the top of the class. It's a little bit of luck. Which bunker are you going to? I notice some of them have very little sand in. There are one or two. They've got quite a lot of sand in. It's gorgeous seaside sand. The players today are much squarer with the shoulders off than the way through and the way they turn through the ball. But I, I, I thought he was in great shape there. He really looked good, and he's staying in the shot so well. I think. I know exactly what you mean by that, but can you explain it? I thought I did. What do you mean by staying in the shot? No, well, a lot of people, you know, when they come into the ball, they come out of it. That he stays and he finish, he presents the club face to the ball so well, and that he's presenting it. There's no sling of the club face. He's there and through the ball. It's and that's what you call staying in the shot. Would you agree with that, Saul? I'm sorry that this is radio and not television because you really need to be able to see what Hutchie was doing. There. I've spent a lot of time, especially in this neck of the Woodson Open Championships, following Tiger quite closely on course from the early days. And it was very noticeable in one of his early Opens how from an hour, hour and a half beforehand, he never did anything quicker than what he was doing just there. He had the heartbeat right down, moved slowly, just keeping very calm and cool. You're such a jet, you go, give me another chance. First man who started doing that, guess who? Bobby Locke. Used to get up in the morning slowly out of bed, used to shave slowly. 
So he was only had the water coming out slowly. Four times Open champion Bobby Lockett, over a hundred tournament winner. And it's good. It's, it, it's a rhythm that you work to. I mean, you've got some people that move quickly. They quick swing on. And it, it's a pace. It's amazing that more players haven't imitated some of the things that Tiger does. Many have tried, but it's, it's not too easy to imitate. This is a demanding part, Graham. A long, slow putt back up the hill. Quite difficult to judge from such a long way away. Big swing of the putter from Matsuyama. Still didn't quite get it to the hole. It, you're a long way away there. Our television camera foreshortens the length of the putt, but it's a huge green. And I'd have to say that where Tiger is and where Matsuyama was, I'd favour where Tiger is actually. A lot more simple of putt. Russell Knox. He knock it up the hill. Oh, good ball putt. He's slipping a little bit by, but good effort. He's rolling the ball, I think, very well on the green. There was a bit of a bobble there, but basically rolling very well. I watching Tiger at St Andrews in 2000 when he was still really learning the links game. He was obviously pretty good at it. Putting on the 6th of St Andrews from 80 yards away. He couldn't see any other way of getting it close through all the humps and hollows. He had a brilliant putt. Stormy. Quite yeah, severely uphill. Severely uphill from the right hand side. Give it a good thump to get it onto the putting surface. Looks to be nicely judged. Go on! Oh! Well, in the old days, that would have gone in. Just didn't quite get the pace right, Julian, did he? Fantastic putting, but unlucky he didn't make the three. Really beautiful effort. He's looking pretty good with that putter. He looks really good. Putting action's really smooth flowing actually could I just say he's looking pretty good he's looking ominous what you say back home that was an obvious line though <laughs> great line Hutch the harder thing was the pace very unlucky he was actually going downhill there too I think it was funny they talked about it but unless you know the speed you're going to hit the ball you can't choose a line Disappointed to hear you say that Tiger's game downhill. That's no, the I said his putt was down. Don't you start you as bad as Mark James. Work to do for Matsuyama to stay at one over. Also, right to left. Second one that he appears to have pulled a bit. In the old days, when there was so much hoopla around Tiger, I don't think many players found it easy playing with him. So many distractions. I was actually talking about that. It was interesting reading in the paper that he said it was, it wasn't his fault if people were intimidated. He used to like to take care of himself. And if they got intimidated by that, it was their fault. And I suppose that's absolutely true. Hard not to be intimidating. No, I was going to say brilliance does tend to be intimidating. Very good, well done. That's a handsome, well, not very handsome, actually quite an ugly four, but you'd be delighted to mark four on the card.
Oh, here we go. The sixth hole to par five, monster hole, 580 yards. Hogan's Alley, where Hogan drove between the fence and those bunkers every single day with a driver when he won here at Conducey, 1953. And again, second shot out of bounds, all the way up to left. The trouble, and uh, there we are. Green also, nicely bunkered, but heavily slopes on the sixth green. We have had a couple of eagles and a load of birdies, so the hole not playing its length at all. The top eight at the moment, and this I know will get Hutchie excited. There's four Americans and four South Africans. Oh, that's extraordinary. Actually, we've been very fortunate. We got 12 players in the, in the field this week here from South Africa. It's Tiger Woods, uh oh, the driver. Now keep smooth, keep smooth. Let that ball race away. And it has crossed the spectator crossing. I'm quite surprised that we're allowing people across there. Yeah. Well, that's probably gone well over 300 yards, that one, too. Just a 370 or so? No, that's all. Yeah, it was only 290 in the air. Uh, Julian's very long off the tee. Not so straight, but he's long. <laughs> as I'm as the boys can tell you. If you're brave, fade it off the out of bounds, and that's just what he's done. Look at it go. Look at it go. We backed that one in the sixth race, also through the right up to Tiger. Who says he can't move it out there? Not there. Ooh, he's got lucky. He may not be able to get to the green. He might, but I suspect it may be awkward. But got a better chance than if he'd ended up in the bunker. must be so excited I mean it's not showing it obviously but inside he must be overcome with emotion to be back here playing like this I must I hope our old pal Mike de Villiers is watching this back home in South Africa because he feels the club goes the guys are taking much more left as they go through but that was perfect straight down the line beautiful and just barely going inside Oh, it's Gordon Brand Jr. having a, a nice lolly. He's doing a bit of commentary for the RNA radio service. Former multiple winner on the European Tour, Ryder Cup play. He won a lot. I think he won about nine tournaments, something like that. I remember him winning at East Sussex National doing commentary I was doing radio commentary in those days for BBC and he came over and commentated on David Guilford as he played to the 18th because he was so far ahead with the umbrellas up and it was raining open champion winners since 2010 aged over 40 you're never too old it seems I've just turned 40 Julian so hopefully not you have to be playing though to win 
Uh, his wrist will come right now, be back playing. Tiger's playing, he's 42. There's already been the Open Champion of two countries out part there here at Stormy. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. France and South Africa. But Darren Clark had to wait a long time before he won it 42. Obviously, Ernie Els had previously won it. Phil had to wait until he was 43 before he won it excitingly at Muirfield. And then lost out to Henrik Stenson in that fantastic duel in the sun. Two rippers there by Woods and Knox both drives. Chief. 357 and 365 for Tiger and Matsuyama with a good bounce but he's in the rough it doesn't appear to be in the rough there but I'm sure he's in light rough but uh, he's got a little bit of ditch there to carry Matsuyama went to the Tohoku, Tohoku Fukushi University where there was an earthquake. earthquake. Shall I start that again? In 2011. And uh, I think was tempted to not finish his studies, but he was encouraged to do so by the family. Did so before turning professional. Yeah, yeah. You can't miss him, he's an old guy. What, like me, you mean? Ain't no older. He was coached by his father, wasn't he, Julian? Yep. Yes, he taught him to play, which presumably is why he has that slightly unorthodox action. Maybe they worked on something that, on the range, just to try and pause and get a feeling at the top, and maybe he hit it so good that he tried it on the golf course and it seems to have stuck. In an ideal world, the golf swing would replicate a, a pendulum, would it not, in terms of speed? It would need a nice flow to it, wouldn't it, Hutch? You're the expert on this. What an pendulum. <laughs> well, you want an accelerating takeaway to a slight pause at the top and then an accelerating downswing. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Maximum speed just sort of just past the ball. Yeah. You aim for, but it's not always possible. <laughs> you try to. Sometimes you think you're going like Billio, but it's not hardly moving. <laughs> Matsuyama must have a nice lie in the rough. He's waiting for the green to clear. Maybe got a lie that might come out of there quickly the, just going back to that in the days when I used to read golf magazines a lot and all those instruction things I remember various graphics showing with zone colours and the, the transition at the top of the backswing was always the bit that was highlighted as being the most important it's where you tend to rush too much especially when you get a bit tense and excited <coughs> Tense has been, a, he's been doing a lot of tense assault, <laughs> but true. No, but I mean, is that change is you, well, you're trying to get a little sort of squat in the knees as you turn back and turn through the ball. Tom Watson always highlighted it was that was the most important part of the swing, the transition at the top of the back swing. Oh, fantastic player. Watson won his first championship here way back then in 1975. First Open Champs, that is, Tom. He could have matched the Harden with six wins. He hadn't been unlucky yet. 
Turnbury. Oh, did it right, even that wispy stuff, you could still turn the face over. Boy, it might have. It's not out of bounds on the right there, is it? It's out of bounds left, but not right, surely. Always worries me when I see that clothing. Wheels up landings are not a good thing. Oh, oh that is stiff. A little long. He seemed to give that a bit extra, didn't he, at the bottom? And that hit the cleared really quickly and everything in sync. It was a good solid smack. Green is all clear for Tiger. Must be feeling really confident for him to hit driver down six. Hit a perfect golf shot. So he's in the perfect position to get this one in quite close. Kevin Kisner, the championship leader amongst those who made eagle here he was one over at that point that was a chip in too it was a surprising place for the hole today just eight paces into the screen ten from the left edge just about there, nearly very, very good for Tiger. Again, great control of length. It's going to be a more difficult bunker shot than Russell Knox, I would say. Quite, quite close to that pin location in the bunker on the left. The height he got on this, nearly 120 feet. Quite amazing. Landed it a long way short and looks to be okay in the bunker. Is it in the bunker? I didn't think it made the bunker. Oh, or, or Russell's, or were you talking about there? No, that was yeah. Tiger's. Russell's is in the right hand bunker. All right. So, okay. but it looks a flattish light. Shouldn't be too difficult to get it out. Just maybe quite difficult to get it close. It's that little pot bunker there, isn't it? The front of that seat. Over the years, we've seen Tiger play some extraordinary recovery shots. And I remember Butch Harmon saying when he used to coach him, it's no coincidence that he, more than any other player, would go and practice from ridiculous positions. You know, practice standing on his head, one foot up waist high, and coming off, hitting balls off banks waist high and things. So when he had to do it on the course, it was second nature to him. As kids, we always kind of tested each other around the chipping green. We'd throw a ball down for your the guy that you'd be chipping with and you play that one now they need to be having little games against each other not for money of course just playing but for pride and see how good you can be well that thing just seemed to skirt sideways off Matsuyama's club horrible grass if he's in that sort of marron type grass does not look good unless he just press doesn't look good at all Again, he played it so comfortably that grass couldn't have been as thick as it looked. Yeah, he's made it look easy on a couple of occasions. Matsuyama coming out of the rough. Keeps the loft on the blade quite nicely. 
It's like me, Hutch. I'm not, I'm not as thick as I look. <laughs> I'm not going to reply to that. <laughs> Your doctor too. Come on, Russell. Can he make a birdie? Oh, yes, he well might. But I have a feeling he's, he's all right. He may be a little intimidated to start with. But he has looked very comfortable. He almost leans over too much sometimes, you feel, don't you? He's, he looks. But <laughs> it's a very comfortable swing and a very good recovery there. Well done. Lovely shot. That was the bunker to be in if you were going to miss this green. A lot easier to get a close. Close this pin. Now, this bunker shot's much more difficult for Tiger Woods. Got the blade wide open, looking to try and elevate it and land it as soft as you possibly can on the down slope with them quite comfortably quite a slow putt for Matsuyama should break about half a cup from left to right little stiff that would have been <laughs> a very fancy birdie Sort of don't get the feeling it's blown too hard, do you, uh, Stormy? No, it's not really picked up like the forecast said it would. Said it would get up to maybe 12 to 15 miles per hour, but quite benign. Not really doing much. <coughs> this put for Tiger Woods, right edge. Not a great deal of movement. If he's fair with it, it's inside the hole. If he is looking to just drop it in, it's on the right edge. It's a little pop, a bit unlucky. That will certainly feel like a drop shot. Did the hard work, hitting driver and putting it in the position he did. Poor second shot for Tiger Woods. Don't think it was a poor putt, maybe just a slight misread. He gave it a nice solid little pop, didn't he? I mean, very quick putt. Compared to others, now Knox for his first birdie of the day get back to just one over good man the 61st birdie of the day on that hole it's averaging 4.6 amazingly it's one of only three holes that's averaging under par the old course can still fight and seventh hole Looking to avoid the bunkers once again. Whether you hit driver and hit it past them all or whether you lay back and leave it short of the two on the right. Pin tucked away on the right hand corner over the bunker. Difficult to get to today. Especially if you're going in with a longer iron. So that you might see the players take this one on and attack it. Quite a flattish green in the middle but does slope away from you over the bunker. A couple of those fairway bunkers up the right, it's about 280 yards to get by them. 
But remember, it's all to out of bounds on the left. The way they've been playing, I feel the wind might be coming a bit from the left. Yeah, this uh, could be coming a fraction from the left hand side. It was supposed to be south westerly today, but seems to be playing more south south east. So there might be a hair of help in it. I'm going with three wood. He's going to be very happy with that one. Well, as I said, golf originally was meant to be played on the ground. Most of the time it's a big, big aerial game now, but this really, and you've got to be able to control the length, and there are definitely players who bounce the ball better than others, that know how to handle the bounce better. Yeah, I'm liking to see that Tiger's got an iron out for this hole. I think this is the right way to play the seventh. 271 to the bunker. Be looking to probably hit this iron about 240. Most likely going with a four iron. Beautiful posture. Yeah, there, more of his stinger type shot, wasn't it? Thank you. Thank you. It certainly was. Saw so Russell knocks it three, would it? 80 feet in the air. Tigers knocked an iron down at 45 feet through the air. And in perfect position. Perfect to hit just above the hands, halfway back. Almost a little laid off there. Beautiful arm swinging down. Bang. Really covered the ball well there, Hutch. Didn't he just? It's a normal two iron loft is 20 degrees. That one's bent down to 17. So he's taken a few degrees off it just to be able to chase one along low. I don't know about that, Doogie. You should never use a golf club that's got more degrees than you have. Bad news for Brooks Kepka fans. He started with a birdie, but he had a double bogey at the fifth, only a par five at the sixth. Dropped a shot at the seventh and has doubled the par three eight. He's four over par for eight holes. Made a, an indifferent start Go last on, year and came through well at the end, but that will take some recovering from. He's done nothing Go since on, winning the USA. He's been away on holiday for a couple of weeks, hardly played any golf at all, but that's the way he likes to do it. Did the same last year. I think he had every right just to take a break. There's the new clubhouse as you see the, the white hotel and then look to the right of that and you've got that cylindrical building that's the new clubhouse literally just opened this year very nice it is too and then underneath all the tentage there is a six hole course that they use for the kids in the area training them all the locals from 5 to 18 yeah great initiative from Carnoustie allowing kids up to the age of 12 to play for free and can wear pretty much anything that they'd like to wear which is very different for a golf club to to do that but it's all about getting the kids involved playing the game of golf it's what we like to see and under 16 year olds as has been the case for a long time now come to the open free Jordan Spieth almost overhauled Jack Nicklaus as the youngest to win three different majors. His first three wins were all different. In the same way that Gary Player had done a long time before him. I was reading on social media today that no player has won an open at St Andrews 
and a Carnoustie. And there are three players in the field this week that can do it. Zach Johnson, Louis Oosterhuizen and Tiger Woods. And of those, he's the most likely. Looking at the way that it's going, I would say it's possibly Tiger Woods. Zach Johnson was level par and Louis was one over. Louis struggling with a neck injury, having pulled out last week in Gullen. I mean, Zach Johnson chipped in for an eagle today at six. I might have got him and Kisner mixed up, I'm afraid I must apologise. But definitely Zach did. Obviously, it's very slow out there. It's taking a long time. The boys are obviously waiting for the greens to clear. We saw in the shot clock masters in Austria this year just how quickly they can play and what a joy it was too. It would be very disappointing, I think, if that is just forgotten and no action is taken to bring that into play on a regular basis. Yeah, and the players in the group ahead of not quick players. Garcia is not the quickest and Sharma's quite a slow player, I'm led to believe. But on this seventh hole, there are two tees that are right next to the green. Eighth, obviously, and 13 as well. We saw the difference in ball flights between the two players. 100 or so feet by Matsuyama. 45 feet by Tiger Woods. <laughs> and from 194 yards, possibly going in with a six iron. over the top of that bunk if you want to go or, or move it slightly left to right to try and get the tin which is sort of more towards the right of the screen just five paces from the right edge yeah really from where he was that that's okay was a better iron shot from Matsuyama. Look more in control. Right, let's see what Tiger can do. Yeah, big high cut might be the answer. Well done. Good job. Well, that flag is sort of just flopping around. You're not too sure quite what it's doing. Okay, Russell. Bit of a slow start for Russell Knox himself, dude. A couple over after the first two and has made his first birdie at six over back to just one over par the three behind tiger i don't know that flag it's just moving around you're not sure what it's doing it should be just coming in from the left hand side but it does seem to be flicking yeah, around yeah, that's your line okay the flight it's all with the flight Neither carry at all about the flight, so you're looking to land this one softly, get it up in the air. Yep, it's coming up a little shy. That hole right in the back, if you go through the green, it'd be very difficult to get it back up and down, so it's sort of one of those. I'll maybe take a four and get out of there. Look 
heading down to Tiger Woods again. Just played it safe this time. Got it nicely pin high. Got a rarely flat putt from the middle of the green. The few players this afternoon has not dropped a shot yet. Those were shots quicker away here and there. He just looks at peace with himself, Tiger. He does. He looks very, very comfortable. Just the way he's walking. He, you know, a couple of years back, he could barely walk. Or so and so. Tiger rang his caddy when he was laid up with his injuries and said to him, you know, I'm going to be out for quite a long time. Joe, you go and find yourself another job. And his caddy said straight to him, I'm your man. I'm sticking with you. Well, that's fantastic. Loyalty. What an attribute doesn't happen too often no, out here anymore. Sadly, Loyalty. The, the world is a changed place. I believe he was long-time caddy for Fred Couples before Tiger. Is that true? I'm not, I'm not really sure. I, mean, and, uh, I wouldn't have minded caddy for Fred Couples. I'm fairly comfortable. Me neither. I, I, I always did so enjoy watching him play. And came down to South Africa a few times as well, didn't Freddie? Really. You may see him next week at St Andrews. I hope so. Yeah, and with the court. I believe it's nice and hard and fast there too, so it could be very interesting. I believe there is a fantastic field in the seniors Open Championship there next week. Russell Knox, long, long birdie putt at seven. Can he roll it up close or even better still? Well done. Good four. a really nice putt from Russell it was not as easy as it may seem he had to come up on over the ridge of the bunker quite a bit of a swing from right to left managed it quite nicely he's so burnt isn't it I mean the brown but I mean it's it really has the linksy look, hasn't it? I'm sure people enjoy looking at these pictures. All well, it's so different to the normal parkland golf. And uh, really, well, this is where the game started. Class looks immaculate. Greens are running nicely. Fairways are running fast. As you say, very, very burnt the, the fairways. But when the ball's lying on them pure lies get that nice crisp strike and this put for Matsuyama back up the slope not a great deal of movement from either direction may favor left side will be quite a slow putt Yeah, you go. That a wild ride. But uh, you know, with the, the, the greens at this speed, most club golfers could relate to this sort of speed. This is what they normally putt at. So I think it's very interesting for them. You go. This one a right, right old rip. That was an interesting graphic showing how poor, relatively, he's been in the first round in majors. If his first round average was better, he might have won by now.
big trick is, of course, just to make it another round and not for a majors. It's had he lost Peter Thompson uh, a few weeks back, and he made three pars to win an opening. And they said, you made it look so easy. So he said, well, what's hard about making three pars? But he could divorce the fact it was for the open, which is fantastic. Very chance now for Tiger after missing one at the previous hole, and not quite the speed he needed. Good putt. Though. And he was saying earlier in the week how he's always found it more difficult on slow greens. He's much happier when there's some speed in the greens. He always used to have to put a bit of extra lead tape coming over here in the open to put more weight in the putt ahead. Julian, there's a simpler way to do it. Well, hit it harder. No, you just up the pace of the stroke, exactly. The truly great putters, doesn't matter what speed, they'll find it. And I would have always rated him as a truly great putter, really. Well, he has won three opens, so he, he must have found a way. And 11 other majors, so uh, <laughs> not looking for an argument at all. <laughs> no, but those other ones were all on quick greens. Normally, that's what they are, apart from the opens. There's a hole in both of them. No, but I mean, all the ones in America, the PGAs, the US Opens, the Masters, will all have been on very good greens. I agree. Whereas here, at St Andrews, you're sometimes putting on greens running at nine on the stint meter. Thankfully. <laughs> Par 3 eighth. Find the heart of the green. And he's never really going to have a long putt for Betty, maybe 20 feet or so. How to bounce down the left hand side. That can creep in if the ball just misses those two bunkers and the ball can run down to the fence. Yeah, it's very, very close on the left of the green there, that out of bounds. It's a bit of a scary, scary hold. And, uh, it's, you need a healthy hit to playing at 181 yards today. I think the right hand bunker has been favoured for quite a lot of the players today. I watched Peter Uline on here yesterday hit a 9 iron. The hardest and highest 9 iron I've ever seen. I mean, Zeus was worried. Thor probably got Thor. will be looking to hit seven iron I would say to this whole location landed 20 25 feet short of the hole and skip up it's good yeah. that finish where'd that finish up to you just short of the green uh -huh. maybe half a club short A picture. This should be perfect for Tiger Woods. Eight iron. High ball flight. Yeah, to come down, landing softly. And the boys in front must have played the whole well because they haven't had to wait. Possibly being told to get a wriggle on. Good Good okay. Safely on. The boys in front all made threes. Brooks Kepka has followed up his double bogey at the eighth of the bogey at the ninth, out in 41, five over. Mm. Started with a drive, drove it on the first green, made a birdie. Ay, ay, ay. But I think that we should stress how easy you can do that on this golf course. You just hit the wrong shot at the wrong time, you play a heavy penalty. Looking from this angle left edge of the camera tower with the number 8 sign 
on it is perfect position. Good find bunkers. with us at 321 or soon afterwards you won't have seen this happening Tiger Woods hitting the perfect tee shot brilliant second shot perfect putt and starts with a hard to better birdie Got a little bit lucky with his tee shot at the fourth could easily have ended up in that ditch but he just ran off the bank and kept it out took full advantage of his good fortune having tired the second and the third doesn't miss too many of these birdie number two two under hit a superb perfect drive down the sixth but just made a mistake with his approach found the front left bunker had a very awkward bunker shot which she played really well but missed that birdie putt another longish birdie chance at the seventh had it absolutely on the right line Last winner here, Podrick Harrington's out in level par 36. Two birdies, two bogeys. Well, he beat in the playoff, Sergio Garcia. Dropped two shots in the first three holes, but he's got one back. He's one over. Justin Thomas who got it to four under, bogeyed the 12th, and has only made a par five at the 14th, the pretty easy par five. He's at three under, playing with Molinari, Francesco Molinari's at two under. You can see the slopes now that Russell Knox has got a putt up there for him just short of the screen. And to get the pace right is not easy, and he's played an absolute beauty. Well done. big hitters Dustin Johnson is one over playing the 16th with Alex Noren who's just bogeyed 15 and 16 to slip back to level power Matsuyama facing quite a difficult bunker shot seen players play two different ways fly it all the way to the pin or just kind of fat duff it out and run it to the hole Kind of got caught between the two. Didn't quite strike it. Was looking to try and land it all the way. Not the best execution from Matsuyama. It's a tough day, I'm afraid, for Jovan Rebula, the amateur champion from South Africa. Anil's his nephew. Dropped shots in the first two holes. And out in 40s, dropped five shots coming home. He's nine over. I know that feeling as an amateur champion playing this course <laughs> in the Open in 1999, nearly 20 years ago, playing with the, the great Tony Jacklin. Any shot? Quite a few. He had a good look at Russell Knox's but similar sort of line he's on here, so uh, Tiger might get this one in a close proximity. Yeah, he should have got a good read from Russell Knox. 
will swing a little from right to left try and straighten up as it gets to the hole slightly up a hill quite a slow putt and try and get the pace right so you don't have to work too hard if you don't make it just to tap it in good effort Such a beautiful day the Carnoustie. Normally quite grey when we come to Carnoustie in October. And a few clouds around there is talk that it might be a little shower during the night and some light rain tomorrow, but just wait and see. It doesn't look like that now. Yeah, a little bit more wind would be interesting to see how the players would play. It's looking very calm this afternoon. It, it seems to be a bit more difficult this afternoon, judging from the scoring. But it doesn't look as though there's much out there at all. It's a Yama for his par. Another one gone. I think the difficulty could be to do with the fact that the greens are maybe firming up a little bit. Maybe not running as smoothly as they did first thing this morning. Amazing from that top shot, it looks like a, a wrinkled beach, doesn't it? When the tide has gone out and the sand has all that wrinkling. It's a battle. The one at the moment is not winning. one in Tiger for par three and a good solid start to under par after eight the first open championship that Tiger won in 2000 Andrews, he was 19 under par, and he won by eight. But Els and Bjorn, as it's a simple tap in for Knox. When he won again at St Andrews in 2005, he was 14 under, and he won by five ahead of Colin Montgomery. You remember striding down the 18th, crowds cheering. It was the first and only time, I think, that I've ever seen him swing his arms. Can you picture, picture that Monty walk with his arms hanging by his side? That time, it was shoulders back, and he was swinging his arms like a soldier. Well, let's look at this ninth hole. Tough par four to close out this front line. 474 yards in length. There's a couple of bunkers down the right that you seriously want to avoid. And if you do that, you might find one on the left, which is also just as severe. And then nicely bunker toward the front of the green. Another very deep green, 44 paces deep. And uh, it's a hole you're more than happy to make four. Make four. We'll get on to the next. And the last time that Tiger won in 2006 at Hoyle, he was 18 under par. He only won by two that time ahead of Chris DeMarco. Sergio Garcia dressed like a canary. Bright yellow. I thought people were very unforgiving about that. His yellow outfit. It didn't seem the wisest outfit, though. Somehow. Yeah, I just wonder what about Garcia? How he's going here today. He's been a bit unlucky here a couple of times. It might be. You never know. Do you believe in courses giving you back something or taking something away? You're nodding yes. He's nodding no. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think he was one over last time. Yes, he's. He, Dropped shots early on, but he's got one back. Oh, 
Okay. I think that one's fine and dandy. Do you believe in bogey holes? I believe certain holes can get you, there's no question about that. You just somehow can't set, set yourself up to play them, and that's the way you do it. Charles Schwarzel had a lovely round yesterday. They had seven birdies, but double bogey in the seventh hitting out of bounds. <laughs> Made an eight on there today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. What you call a quadruple, I suppose. Uh, four shots gone. Shot 74. Well, that's not bad playing with an eight in your card. Four shots gone in one hole. Oh, well. Still, if he gets going, there are three rounds to go. Four miles an hour of wind. Extraordinary. It is extraordinary because just looking out just now, there's some tape out the window, so it looked like it was fluttering quite strongly. And I was a bit wondering whether the wind had sort of picked up a little bit. It certainly hasn't. That was one of the fans. Aha. Uh -huh. Again, the iron to Tiger. Look to be aiming a little left to be out of it. Well, you got a bit lucky there. That's a long way back. Definitely taking all the bunkers out of play. Looks like he's just hit a five iron. Very conservative from Tiger. They said they were work, trying to work the times for the round at about four hours, 26, I think. Was it? They said it was 4.40, they wanted a little less, but these boys are over two hours already playing nine. When you're laying up, lay up. You know, it's, I think if you take a club, then try and get more out of the club than you normally do. You're looking for trouble, aren't you? It's but he's clearly back. He's not happy. He's, he's not happy at all. Sorry. I agree. But you know, it's just uh, and what he's doing normally in his head's too inside an approach to the ball. Still nobody able to challenge Kevin Kisner with the 66 much earlier on. Eric Van Rooyen was out very early on too. Excellent work from him. Tony Finnow is on cloud nine and he had a birdie to finish with as well for his 67. Four bogeys in his round. Xander Lombard got it round with just one bogey. Same for Brandon Stone, a couple of young South Africans in very good form. Roy McElroy is a couple of under playing the last. Look out for Francesco Molinari. Really is coming into his own. Zach Johnson, you fancy, might be dangerous. Thomas Peters is due a big result. Bradley was one of the reserves. I'd be happy to be teeing it up. Alex Noren, drop shots at 15 and 16 to slip back to level par. Adam Scott was out in 34, but has had two drop shots on the back nine. European amateur champion Nikolai Hogyard. 
very highly thought of. 72. Jordan Spieth also dropping away. Had a bad last four holes. Four over for the last four. Tiger Woods has got 243 yards to this pin at the ninth. No real chance from that far away to get it much closer than 15 feet. Pin tucked in behind the bunker. As he can work his magic and get it to come down softly and use the slight breeze from left to right. may prefer the ball to be in the bunker as long as it's got to the bottom and not stayed at the back of the bunker where it'll be more difficult to get club on the ball uh, knee high rough here for Matsuyama yeah. boy he gave that a right old cuff Bobbling along, it's doing amazing, and uh, it really is a remarkable recovery. I Terrific! Swear, I swear that ball was accelerating on the fairway. <laughs> Fairways are running faster than the greens. Obviously, the place to be in the left rough. He's got a stance there. Hopefully his left foot won't be in the bunker. Might be close to it. Unfortunately, it bounced quite straight. If it had gone to the right a little, it could have found the ditch. found its way to the bottom of the bunker it shouldn't be overly difficult for Tiger to get it close but if it's only just dropped in and nestled down then he'd be looking just to get it out careworn look there he's really crossing himself and putting it in there did leave himself an awful long way in we know he's gonna play quite conservatively but that is a long way back on this ninth hole and we saw in the graphic earlier Dustin Johnson hit it 408 yards down here and will have just been chipping it on it's not a very big bunker let's hope he's got a nice flat line you could use a bit of upslope too if the ball was. I'm not sure that it is. The ball might 
be slightly above his feet in the bunker, which makes it a little more difficult to get the club to go under. Easy. Easy. He could have done a great deal better, could he? Also running away from coming out of the bunker, isn't it? Yeah, played it quite nicely. Just looking to land it on the slope and run down. Was never going to get any spin to slow the ball. Three top tens in 11 tournaments on the PGA Tour this year. Tied second in the Valspar and tied fifth in the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Tied fourth in his most recent tournament behind Molinari in the Quicken Lanes. Yeah, only missed two cuts this year. Only one player left with the chance for a birdie, and he was deep in the woods, really, wasn't he? You dropped out to boys nicely placed, and he's the one with the chance for the birdie, and others both battling to make part. What a funny old game! It is a funny old game. This putt can break two ways slightly from his left to begin with, and then coming off the slight shoulder of the bunker from right to left. It's a good makeable opportunity. That would have been stealing one after his tee shot. After his tee shot, I think he'd be quite happy to get out of there with a four. This push should just break a fraction from his right. Not an awful lot. Speed beat him. Good putt. to keep a bogey off his card. Sorry about that, uh, Julie. That's the old Tiger. 
up and down when he was in trouble. Was that one of his clutch puts, Julian, do you think? Absolutely, yeah. I like this putter he's got. He's looking very good with it. It looks to be working really well for Tiger. Oh, as we look at the 10th hole, three bunkers down the right hand side. There is one further away, but that shouldn't be in the players. Where the one down the left hand side, the ball can gather into the left hand bunker, so you do need to be wary of that trap. And then the second shot over the burn. Got to try and find the heart okay, of the green. Square. If you do go long, the ball can race away. And quite a few players down there today. Difficult to get up and down. Players have been hitting driver down the tenth today and getting it a long way down leaving themselves a short iron one player actually hit his drive into the burn over 400 yards it is this is the smart play three wood for tiger woods pretty good six out of eight fair was hit the Tiger, it's a good average sometimes. So not going with the driver off the deck, but the, the deck one driver at six, a monster. They found the fairway, and now a three wood here. The other bunk is down the right that could catch him if it pushed slightly. Where is it? Way back there in the rough. Yeah, yeah, it's a trend. Looks like he's found the bunker that. I didn't really think it was in the player's way. It's quite a, a way to the right. And it will be just a, a pitch out. No opportunity to get anywhere near the green. I feel there was the three bunkers come to the took it out, but that one, as you say, that bunker's well in the rough too. They started two and a half hours ago. Yep. Just That's take off on the 10th. Let's hope that the, the rest of the round will go a little more quickly because that really is a long, long time to take over nine holes. Oh. Again, I think we can safely say it's not their fault, really, is it? They've waited for it on every, every single key. That's right, Hutch, they are being hauled up. Whoa, three whoa, wood. Whoa, 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 Stop. I'm That's gonna going go to go in the water. Just the sort of day he's having, isn't it? He won't be happy when he gets up there, Hutch. It's over 400 yards he's hit that three wood. I, I know it's ran <laughs> an awful long way. Russell Knox doesn't know what's just happened. With Matsuyama's ball, he's got driver. I'll be taking a little bit off it. He doesn't like it. Oops. That's in the left hand bunker. That will be another one that's going to be just pitching it back out into play. That's inc quite incredible how far that three wood's gone down, down 10. Well, the Lynx is really fiery now, isn't it? I mean, it's had a warm sun and a breeze on it all day. One thing you see from Tiger Woods, he wasn't too cute with his bunker shot. He made sure that he got it out of the bunker to give himself a chance to make his part and then hit a lovely putt dead centre of the cup and move on to the 10th really was a sort let's have a look at Matsuyama again he did give it a right old pop but you say if it just gets a bounce on the down slope away she goes 
when that ball pitched it had 140 yards to go to the burn and you just knew it was going to get there as it got closer and closer you said much earlier in the day that you do need a bit of luck playing things golf and you've got to say that is pretty unlucky hard to account for that yeah difficult to take he won't be happy when he gets up to find that his ball has reached the burn Kuramoto tied fourth the best result by a Japanese player in 1982 Where did Aoki finish? I'm sorry, my mind was elsewhere at the moment. Aoki. I, I, I think he was in, in a player for the US Open at one time. Aoki. I think he done well in the Open one year. Huh? He used to love watching Mariyama play. Always played with a smile on his face. Enjoyed his golf and enjoyable to watch this man certainly won't have a smile on his face when he finds out where his ball is he's striding up nice and firmly there but I don't believe it when he gets it Given Uzziah Bolt a bit of a race for his money after it pitched to the ditch. I'm not sure who would have won. Money of Uzziah probably only would have taken about 12 steps. And that's a perfect illustration of how penal the bunkers here can be. You get in the wrong place, that's, that's it. Just try and get it out somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Get it out somewhere. He wasn't able to go back towards the fairway, so he's had to go towards the spectators. Hopefully, yeah, find a nine. decent lie yeah. in the left rough. Look at back at Tiger. We saw he was in the right hand bunker. He's wedged it out sideways back into the fairway. wind is freshening up flicking between 14 and 19 miles per hour pretty much straight down for the players Holds right back of the green back left easily slips through the green here quite comfortably Tiger will be looking to land this ball roughly 20 feet 25 feet short of the hole and expecting it to skip up and then stop you see the change in the colour on the putting surface not the green that it was the first thing this morning so they must be firming it up the greens from a plane up above I take it shot uh, he's got a chance of keeping his record clean it's comforting to know that the plane is up above I've just checked up on Isai Ogi and you're quite right he did have a second place in the USA but tied seventh was his best the open capture did that three times. Knocks. Yeah, it's not bad. Middle of the green. 
was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame in 2004. Won a record 51 times on the Japan Tour. Matsuyama from the drop zone. Looking to skip this one up close to the pin. Yeah, it comes off nothing much has happened for Matsuyama so far today. He's really had a struggle. Stay there. Well done. Very nicely played from Matsuyama. Played it to perfection. Couple of bounces, a little bit of check, and then just release up to the hole within five feet. Fantastic first day weather-wise for the, this year's Open Championship. And, uh, is it? A lot of people expected the course to be really taken apart, but it certainly hasn't been. It's held its own. <laughs> 18 oases in an otherwise grass desert. Have you been in a camel? Uh, yes, I think I have. Yes, I think we did a, a, an opening for the Golf Channel once in Dubai. On a camel. With one hump or two hands. Yeah, Warren was there as well. Let's get back to the 10th green here and soon after going to Dubai quickly. The Tiger with a chance to save for after. Really, you have to say a wild three wood way off the fairway and catch that bunker in the rough. Sensible pitch out and then a very good shot into the green. But not his turn. This putt for Russell Knox. Back up the slope. It will be quite a slow putt. Not a great deal of movement. Fraction favour the right hand side. Made a few of these when he won two weeks ago. Well, there's two putts on the final green in the Irish Open, was it? But it's unbelievable the two putts he holds. Want to get into the playoff and then to win the playoff. It's so, sadly, that takes him now to three over par. Just got the birdie at six, dropped it at nine. But now, another one here. Quite a good crowd following this group. So late in the afternoon. And you're really out in the country at this point too. Long way from the clubhouse. Well, we haven't seen Tiger Woods on these shows for a few years. So everybody would be wanting to see him play. Now this putt should just break a fraction from his right. Maybe one, two balls. Depending on how far he strikes it. This would be a good four. This would be a brilliant four, Julian. He, he, he just never looked set up to hit it in from the right, did he? I mean, and, and then he sort of chased after that. So the weakest, but we've seen him hit. 
not helped by hitting a spike mark or some sort of bobble. We saw from the aerial view that the greens start to change colour. Light patches, green patches. So they will become a little bit more crusty and bobbly. You can see the change in colours. Well, there are two types of grasses in there. There's fescue and annual meadow grass. Fescue is the, the finer grass. A disastrous hole all round. And for Matsuyama, it didn't do an awful lot wrong. But I mean, I think it called the right line. They said a couple of balls to the right. It never started. It almost started left of the hole. That, but this is surprising. He was a little up and out of the putt early, which can cause it to go left. Any discomfort at all is wriggling his back, as you see here. You're trying to say all of a sudden he's got a little bit of discomfort, he's made a bogey, and now he's moving his neck. Nick, yeah, I know. Oh, well, well if, he, if he has got discomfort, at least it's in his shoulders and neck, not in his lower yeah, back. Absolutely. Well, I just hope there is no discomfort. Wondering about this earlier today, Barn Rat whipped it on the screen and nearly made two. To dropping a shot there would have changed his plans, but obviously not. Too professional. No, it's good to see that he hasn't changed his game plan. The wind is freshen and up from in into off the left. Oh, this is the right player. Get it in the middle of the fairway. Give yourself a good look at the green. Well, I suppose that's in the middle. It could be in the centre of that 11 fairway. Three wood for knocks. the other way on the 11 
see four bunkers two down the left two down the right just got to avoid those no real chance of getting to the green if you're in one of those bunkers this green has got a slight step in the middle and that pin location is really difficult to get at there have been a couple of players earlier on in the day that have knocked it on this hole but there was no real breeze at that time this should be a relatively easy hole certainly a birdie opportunity some players able to drive it the 12th there is a much harder hole long par 4 503 yards dead straight yeah we normally play that hole as a par 5 in the Dunhill links and that lovely par 3 175 yards today that's what it is on the card too just about the easiest hole on the course the short par 5 14th downwind it's a, a drive and a flick especially for the long drivers 15th there is an awkward one although it's downwind is that dog leg left and it's quite a hard fairway to find there's a ridge up the left hand side you get the wrong side of that and you kick off into the rough and it slopes left to right towards a bunker then the very demanding finish the long par 3 16th find that green and you pat yourself on the back 17th coming back into wind you're trying to find that island exactly where the 17 is between the two bits of the Barry burn and then the 18th downwind but it's still a brute hardest hole on the course Barry burn meandering all over the place out of bounds up the left hand side John van der Velde's got a theory how to play it. That's cruel. No, no, he knows now. <laughs> it's one thing knowing how he might do it, it's another thing executing it. Knox, I thought he hit a three wood off the tee. It's quite a long way back and on the wrong side uh, to be uh, getting anywhere near this pin. Uh, very different with the hole cut back right. I don't think you can go at the flag at all. No, I'll be just looking to hit it in the middle of the green. Two pot, get out. He's made his mistake off the tee. Scottish born American, well he's still officially Scottish but to all intents and purposes American is having to work very hard for his card. So Dave. <laughs> it's all feel mate. As easy as that. Just punch it in and hope for the best. I sometimes wonder how these pros got where they are without Caddy's help. Of fashion now. That's all he could do really from where he was, sensible play and, and uh, got a long, long putt from there. See the dust coming up, those little practice just flicking off the ground and little dust flying up. They are bone hard the fairways. Just a nice wedge for Tiger. How brave will he be? Tremendous advance he's made this year after, of course, not playing for a couple of years, dropping right down to 649th in the world ranking. Well, a good week this week, he'll be back in the top 50. Absolutely. Where he belongs. Looking to just cut this into the back softly, right pin softly. got it to land softly again pin high seen him make quite a few shots pin high 
today so he's in full control of his distance Matsuyama and his second shot into the 11th green. So not really coming from the right spot. But we'll take it. Well done. Definitely good things need to happen for Hideki. Matsuyama has got to where he has. All went wrong at the second hole. Just absolutely pulled this one. Hard the third and then played a beautiful third shot at the par four fourth to save his car there. Tricky pin position on the fifth, right up on the top slope at the back and from the front of the green, he gave it a real whack, but still couldn't get closer than that and couldn't make the tar saving putt. Dangerous par 3 8. It's only 181 yards, but trouble everywhere. And he failed to get up, up and down from the bunker. This was his par attempt. Out in 39, four over, not a birdie inside. In trouble again on the 10th. Another par putt sliding by. All three players making bogey fives on the tenth. Back live and knocks a long way from the hole on the eleventh. Yeah. That should, I think, come a little from his right on the way up there, but it is slightly up, it's a long old way. If it gets us within a, a yard, he'll be more than happy. It's just on a little raised platform, isn't it? Back right in the flag, so the last bit is uphill. Hasn't got the necessary oomph. That's the first putt he's left short. There's definitely more breeze now, as was forecast. But then we're getting into the stage of the day, the sort of diurnal variation where it normally drops away, especially under these clear blue skies. And often, sort of between 8 and 10 o'clock, get lovely playing conditions. It's not true, but the greens are probably not quite what they were earlier today. So look pretty good tight but slightly up to from where he is it's like 35 feet I didn't really think he was quite that far away Julian but a uh, little left to right in it He's aiming quite a long way left. Chance. And he was right. What a putt. Back to two under. Bounce back immediately from his first drop shot. The Tiger of old. Doesn't look too excited about it then. 
looks very determined, I'll tell you that for nothing. Again, really, super putt, beautiful weight, right in the middle. Subdued though, isn't he? I mean, it, it just had that little sort of little fist pump, not the old tiger charging after it uh, with the underarm into uh, the solar plexus. He's playing himself back into it. And it's good to see how many good finishes he had. And, uh, he's done an amazing job now. Can Matsuyama follow him in for a birdie as well? A little from the left. He can't. Very hard game. The swing is out of kilter, and you're desperately searching for something. Come on, that's a rock south for his par. This is what this putt will do. This will also try and go to the right. I don't really think so. Straight in the middle. That's the way. Just putting perfection from Tiger. in again. Well, you couldn't decide it still didn't look 35 feet, did it? No. And off to the 12th. Normally a par five. There's one today. There. For the iron, he could possibly run into those right hand bunkers but to be very careful it's mm, not a great line doesn't need too much run that's a long way back uh, he has several times left himself an awful lot to do you get no sight of the flag from there because those two Bunkers on the right hand side are deep with big revetted fronts. But I guess you play this as a strong par four, don't you? I mean, it's a very you strong par four. If you walk, walk away with a four, you're very happy. It often has been played as a par five in the past, yeah. But it's a. Uh, See, really, today you've got to go up the left side to get a shot into where the hole is cut front right. But again, laying back here. Yeah, it's, yeah it's just not worth it at all. It seems to be taking longer and longer standing over the ball and it doesn't even before he plays. He's slow at the best of times. Yeah, that's right, but that's not the place to be thinking when you're standing over the ball. That's not going well for Russell. He seems to get into position very comfortably, doesn't he? Sort of very comfortable set up. And, it, and everything looks very smooth. Three wood. Clip. Yeah, it does make it look very simple. Yeah. Easy swing. It's one of those, it doesn't look as though too much is going to go wrong with it. It's amazing how often you say that about somebody's swing yeah. and then they'll hook it out of bounds. 
Brooks Kepka, what an amazing individual he is. Having gone out in 41, five over, has just gone birdie, par, birdie at the 12th, birdie two at the 13th, now he's only two over. <laughs> yeah, he's a sort you can't count out, can you? Still Kevin Kisner up at the top. No changes up there. Well done, Brandon Stone, after winning last week. He's brought all that confidence here, no, not with the 68. Excellent performance. Rory McIlroy, 69. Zach Johnson, 69. John Rahm. A lot of, lot of dangerous players there and lurking. Boy, and Jordan Smith, it's good to see him going well because he's a player with great promise. Mm -hmm. No drop shots out in 34. Bird is at the 6th and the 9th. Ricky Fowler, Chris Wood in at 1 under. Henrik Stenson at 70 with a sore elbow. Torbjörn and Allison dropping a shot at the end for a, a 70. Alex Norum is right there. Molinari back to one under. Bronson Bagoon, who only qualified last week in America to come and play in this championship. At one under. Charlie Hoffman, quite likely to be in the US Ryder Cup team. Adam Scott finishing with a 71. And a good recovery from Fratelli there. He was well over par on the front line and had come back quite nicely to get to even. Had a very weak start. He was out in 37. One over. Earlier than that, he was a couple of hundred. He was, yes. Yep. But he got that back with an eagle at the sixth. That helped. Just yeah, stays in there around 72. And Spieth and Rose, only 72s as well. Each one, another man had a four under par. Getting to the turn, now finishing 72. He was really going very, very well. I tried to hit the, actually he was four under after eight, then dropped a shot at the ninth, double bogeyed the tenth. Three more bogeys after that to be back in 39. Bernard Langer that many people fancy is an outside bet round in 73 and Sean Norris who played so well at Birkdale last year round in 74. got time to think about this because the green is still occupied but it doesn't take a genius to know this is not the right place to be it certainly isn't only thing gone for him is the angle into the green to the flag tucked away behind the bunkers on the right so there's no way he can go to the flag just got to probably try and run it up through that gap at the front aiming for the middle of the green he's gonna have to land it well short of the green isn't it? Uh, yeah he's well gonna land have to land it a good 30 40 yards short so fast the fairway and it does run up and over and the green sits across the player with a big ridge in the middle so more than likely his ball will run to the left that gives you a nice idea that shot from behind the green and, and he's trying to thread a needle through a haystack i've never tried that but it sounds quite difficult i thought it was find one in a haste. It is, but have you tried threading one? <laughs> no, I haven't, no. I 
haven't I not I don't think I'll bother. trying to thread the cotton through the needle. This is ponderous, Dennis. It is. Sadly, yes. It looked like it sped up, you know, it didn't wait on the 8T, didn't wait on the 9T. Bit of a wait on 10. But now back to what happened all the way around the front line and very disappointing. And you really do get an idea by following this one group just how painfully slow it can be. And how can you perform your best when you're having to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait? Uh, Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it at all. Nobody at all. It's just guys with very powerful and strong minds like Tiger that can put up with this. But it's uh, ordinary guys tend to get a little impatient fairly quickly. Monty loved it, of course. I mean, this is his favourite. Drive him up the wall. Oh, he's got lucky. If it wasn't for bad luck, he's had none so far this afternoon, Matsuyama. So that's a really good recovery. That's an exceptional shot from where he was, and they managed to keep it above that slope that I mentioned that goes down to the left. Yeah, I say he got lucky. I mean, it was a it was a very very skillful shot, but it could have ended up in that right hand bunker. Just need a little bit of luck, but what a result! I think he was due a little bit of luck. Now from the golf that I've seen this morning, the only way to get it close to this. Pen is to land across, it. Huh? Yeah. All right, you got it. Short in the wispy stuff. It lands a little softer. If you land it anywhere within five, six yards of the green, it just runs through the through the back. Going for the high cut, they don't. Yeah, as you said, big bounce right through the green. Not an easy shot to play. To, you've almost forced to pitch it short and let it run down. Which is, brings both bunkers on both sides into play. Here's an interesting shot. 225 yards and he's got a 5 wood going down a 5 wood trying to hit a chaser. Well, there is a bit of luck. Landed well, on the top of the bunker and popped out. A bit, yeah. But in the end, it turned out a bit unlucky. Now he's got a devil of a shot down that bank. This was a fantastic result for Matsuyama. Look how far short he's landed at that little bit of luck. Keeps on going and going and going. He landed that about 90 yards short of the green. That really does show how fast the fairways are running. Well, look what he did on the 10th. About 140 yards of run there, didn't he? 140, that's right. Quite incredible. Interesting choice of shot for Russell Knox. I mean, that's all right. It's ended up not too bad, but put it in one of those bunkers is suicidal. He looked like he was trying to chop it from left to right and hold it against the right to left wind to land it soft. But interesting choice of club as well. I mean, there's quite a lot of club to be hitting that shot.
Roger Maltby in the background, well known to American viewers, commentating for NBC. Nothing nasty about his shoes. Wearing metal spikes. Probably not a bad thing, actually, with this, because this dry grass can be very slippery. I think it's a great idea to be wearing the metal spikes in these conditions. I mean, the fairways are like cricket pitches. He's clearly just a little bit discomforted by that neck. And I saw him uh, yesterday and he didn't have anything on then that I noticed. So whether he's just tweaked something overnight, I don't know. He did have a long lie in this morning. Maybe he <laughs> stayed in bed too long. Oh, look at this. Ball miles back in the stands. Just dropped the club on the back of it. Scooted across the green. Yeah, he's just looking to put the tour around the ball a little bit with a lofted club and the ball kind of way outside the back foot get it running as quick as he can this was a shot Nick Price specialised in he's quite good you know he's not bad is he well, I think the, the setup there, and I, I think it's interesting that people watching can see that to get the ball way back like that on that, you know, slide down slope. So the angle was created, he didn't have to do anything with his hands, just take it back, he got the steepness to come down on the back of the ball. So, I mean, he, he really did play a fabulous shot there. What are you saying? It's an easy shot? No, I'm not. He made it easy, that's what I'm saying. But it's back, and, and then you don't have to fiddle with your hands. He's got it, so the angle is just the further you put the ball back, the quicker the club goes in there, doesn't it? Yeah, and the angle's all made for your address. Very well executed. My grandfather taught me that shot, actually. He used to play his, all these little chip shots the same way as Tiger has just then. Outside the back foot and just knock it down and get it running along the ground as quick as you possibly can. Well, I know the, the big thing is, we, I forget, I know I used to be reasonable, great effort, but you almost always de-loft the club that you're using. A, a good player will take more loft than needs and turn the loft on the ball to get the ball gripping. With an average player often takes too little loft and tries to increase the loft, which is the worst way you can possibly play those tiny shots. Come on now, Matsuyama's hand. This will be some three. This would be some three. And this pot does have quite a bit of break from right to left. Slightly down the slope and then back up. Will move quite sharply towards the end of it. Rolled. Still no birdie. He's just having one of those days. It's really hard work. Got to keep grinding away. It's tied 120th at the moment, at four over. Top 70 and ties make the cut in the Open Championship. one over at the moment we'll be making the cut
and see the little chip or a putt to here for Russell Knox, this for his par four. Good man. Fabrizio Zanotti from Paraguay has birdied the eighth and ninth to be out in 34. One of a gang of men at two under. A gang of men who finished at 200 includes Danny Willard, John Rahm, Rory McIlroy, Zach Johnson, Justin Thomas. The big names are lurking. Nice to win here, wouldn't it? To put your name on a trophy alongside the likes of Henry Cotton, Ben Hogan, Gary Player, Tom Watson. Yeah. So maybe Paul Laurie is the the odd man out in that distinguished list, and I'm not saying for a moment that he's not distinguished, but hasn't enjoyed the same success in the game that the others have. Well, they're on the 13th tee now. What a magnificent par three playing. At 175 yards, you know, they hold back left, 31 paces into the screen. That's 44 paces deep and a big slope. I think it, it really is a wonderful par three, this one. You're right, Hutch. It's a fantastic par three, the 13th. See that bunker garden, the front portion of the green, pin back left location, really narrows in between the two bunkers, probably the slopiest green on the golf course this one, slight backstop to the right hand side but if you do go long and left it can run towards the gorse bushes over the green, perfect landing point is in the middle but that is the narrowest point of the green. Tea peg and the dry surface, managing to get the ball to react and sit down very quickly. Not the easiest shot in the world, let's face it, but uh, and then you've got a par five coming and then a very difficult finish. So he, he's got a, he picks up a couple of shots from here on in. It'll be a terrific effort from Natsuyama. He needs something to happen real quick over these next three holes. With that really tough finish. Just like last week, he looks really out of sorts. And there you Oops. see, once it goes over the green, it just runs away. Be interesting to see if it gets close to the gorse bush. I think the word is discombobulated at the moment. He's just not looking quite himself, is he? Can you spell that? <laughs> yes, I can. I'm giving a bit of time. <laughs> Russell seems to like to fade the ball from left to right, so not great to get at this pin with that flight. We'd much rather see him work it the other way, right to left, and skip it up the green. Yeah, 
Messi is just fading off. Mr. Bunker. Uh, uh, oh. 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 Oh, that'll give you nightmares. That's going to be a difficult bunker shot. It's really close to a very steep lip. I have to think he's going to have to play that left, isn't he? Really, I mean, oh, what a place to finish. As we mentioned earlier, somebody are, are so penal, it's if you get out of them. Never mind the ball, if you get out of them, it's pretty <laughs> good. He just would like to have seen him hit it a little bit right to left rather than just customary left to right. We all like to stick to our stock shot, but sometimes you do have to change and try and play it the other way and that was the perfect opportunity to just play it right to left and skip it up the green Tiger Woods very Scottish colours today blue and white blue and white absolutely yeah. looks very neat he's looked very sort of controlled hasn't he but determined but He's really put in together a very good round. The one shot dropped it, Teddy quickly got it back with a monster putt at the next. It didn't look 35 feet, but that's what was headed. It was quite a big turn from left to right, but it went right slap bang on the heart of the hole. But there we are. Kids are still leading the way with that morning round of 66. So closely followed by the South Africans Lombard and Van Royen and Tony Fanau, the American there. That's 67, one back. And really, I, I don't think. We thought somebody might go very low today, but it hasn't happened. I mean, but I still think the story is good because it, it's, it, of course, is giving them nothing. They've got to work very hard for every shot they pick up. They certainly do. And if Tiger Woods was to move to three under or four under overnight, would make a lot of people sit up and realise that the Tiger is back. He got very close a couple of times and just let it slip in the last round, hasn't he, recently, which normally he would never do so. But you've got to play yourself back into form as well as we, which he certainly is trying to do. Yeah, I think if you gave him an, an option of what tournament he'd love to win in his comeback, it would be a oh. major championship. But on the upslope, see, but still, this is going to be a. But they have got these 60 degree wedges and that. Can he get it out from here? Answer? Can he ever? Well, how do you like that? We both thought he was in a little bit of trouble. He's made monkeys out of the pair of us. What a <laughs> terrific recovery. Well done, Russell Knox. That was a fine display of how to get it out of the bunker with elevation, control. But he oh, was lucky to be on the upslope where he was. That was definitely helping him, but like we thought, he was really close to the bunker, no real follow through. Really had to throw the club down into the sand and keep the loft on it to get it straight up. But to get the distance that he did was quite magnificent. That's as good a bunker shot as you're going to see all week. No doubt about it. You know, this is where it's such a funny game. You're mad at yourself for getting in the bunker, then you play a shot like that, you're quite shocked. It, I mean, you're quite pleased. If yeah, you if you were playing match play, you'd have looked at these lines and thought, he's got no chance. Just make three and I've got to um, get out of here and win the hole, but quite miraculous shot from Russell Knox. Much of your arm has played a terrific little chip from where he was. Well done. Absolutely fantastic if the way playing match play both knocked it close from very difficult positions. Can Tiger put it that close? <laughs> it is a silly old game, but we do love it.
33 feet, the last putty hold, similar sort of line coming from the left with 35 footer on the 11th. Okay, roll this one in as well. This put for Tiger Woods. Quite slow to begin with, and then we'll go slightly down the slope once it gets up and over the shoulder of the bunker from left to right. Yeah, he's misjudged that one. You're right, he didn't get it inside the two shots uh, from the other boys. They have a tough putt, but it was, they never really got it on the line. Feel you always got the same line looking from behind the ball and then from the other side of the hole. I often found that sort of change of perception of the putt. I always like to look from the side of the ball first to try and see if I can see the line. If I see the line straight away, then I won't go around the other side and have a look. I think you're just trying to clarify which is what you're seeing when you go around the other side. And sometimes it can confuse you, so if you see it instantly, you go with that. There's a good look at the new putter that Tiger Woods has put in his bag. Uh-oh. Uh, I've got to be a little loss of concentration, you feel, somehow, which I'm, I'm amazed at him, but it happens. I really wasn't expecting that from Tiger. But we should just say that, you see the other guys in trouble, they make three. Tiger, nice shot, three putts, four. Tiger wasn't expecting that from Tiger. Yeah, it's the greens aren't running as smoothly as this morning. We can definitely see that the ball is bobbling around with the the dryness of them now. They're becoming a little bit crusty. They're sort of bounced from right off the club there. But, uh funny thing is when they get bumpy and really quick they're impossible to but bumpy and slow as you've got half a chance funny enough one or two of the players who don't play here on a regular basis are saying they don't think they're as good as they have been in the past when we play them in the Dunhill links they're just absolutely pure I mean they're as good as you ever gonna see interesting selection of players up there as often happens in the open especially in the early stages you get people sticking their heads above the parapet they don't necessarily stay there but in the chasing pack there are some very threatening names well just I'm just thinking of Rob Pampling you know, when he led here after the first round and missed the cut guarantee always that there will be plenty of Americans up there it's amazing how they they never play this golf and they come over here and still score well Martin Keimer was first off this morning around in 71 playing with Andy Sullivan and Sandy Lyle Adam Scott had it a couple under, finished with a 71, as did his fellow countryman, Jason Day. Hatong Lee, fourth last year to ensure he played this year. And 
Doogie Donnelly's new favourite player, Bronson Burgoon. Spotted him last week while we were watching the PGA Golf while having our dinner one night and he says that he'd love to commentate on him. Well, he got his wish. Anything other than his name attracting him? Well, I'm not too sure if he knew anything about Bronson, but maybe he's done his homework on him. That's a very intriguing name. And the good news for Hatchie is there's a lock in the field. True, true. Sam, young Scottish amateur. I don't think he's related to Bobby. No, I don't think so. Spelt either. the same. Protégé of Paul Lorry's. Works in Paul Lorry's. Yeah, it's a really good lad, apparently. Yeah, apparently so. And Paul walked around a few holes with him earlier in the week. Show him the ropes. You're going to listen to anybody. You're going to listen to somebody who's won the Claret Jug around this golf course. No better guide. Big early there, rather. 73. And he had a beautiful iron off the first tee and it dribbled off into unplayable and bunker. So that's what can happen so quickly. Roderick Harrington, two over after 14. Defending the title here. It's Scotland. quite amazing that he was kind of defending the title last year when it was at Birkdale yes. and he's doing it again. <laughs> Last man to win the Open Championship back to back. Seven players have done it since World War II. 16 players in all in the history of the Championship have won in successive years. Happened quite a lot obviously in the early days. Amazing reading up on the Open, especially here at Carnoustie, that the last three times we've been here, three playoffs. 1975 it was an 18 all playoff, last of the 18 holes. On a uh, Sunday. On a Sunday. Because they used to play 36 holes on Saturday in those days, didn't they? Yeah, they did, John. Yeah. Uh, I had a feeling Sergio might do something, but struggling away there at five over par today and put on Snedeker. Yeah, Poor day for Dustin Johnson, 76. The amateur champion, 79. Well, open champion, past open champion, stone last of the day. Amazing, Darren Clark, shame. Uh, long, long wait. Once again on the tee, and it's really taking these boys a long time to get her out. The par 5, 14th, the spectacles. Darren will be looking forward to next year, of course, going home. At Port Rush, you're talking about the championship. Uh -huh. Where he has a home. They put two new holes in, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And I, I mean, well, you and I did the Irish Open there together, did. didn't we? When the crowds were impressive. Imagine what they'd be like next year. Right. Next year, you didn't make a bad breakfast that week. That's not the apartment that you stayed in. Thank you, thank you. You were very good. No, I'm good with a, a fried egg and a mushroom. <laughs> I didn't give you my eggs benedict, I don't think that's it. No, you didn't, no. But, uh, Jamie Donaldson hit that wonderful shot on the 17th green there, and they lobbed it on the green to win that championship. They really do need to do something about this. They're, I mean, they've got to chase people off a bit. It's ridiculous. Well, and the sad thing is, often your first choice is the right choice when you're thinking about it. But they're, they're, you can get in trouble so easy. You chop around those bikes. It does take forever. I mean, if you just but they have, apart from two holes, waited on every single hole. Well, and the first tee, they were okay. Aggressive play from Matiyama, going with the big stick. Now tell me what you think Tiger's going to hit off the tee, but first watch Russell Knox, what do you think Tiger's going to do after that? I think, Tiger will, I think Tiger will hit an iron off this tee. be very surprised if he's attending more. 
the trouble is now it's got so dry and hard you've got to go a long way left hitting driver or you do what he's done and run out on the other side of the fairway you need to be going well left left of that graphic saying 289 hitting driver but Knox going a three wood just looking to stay right of that camera tower in the distance work the ball right to left Nicely played from Russell Knox. The difficulty for the big hitters going tight left has been that they've been sticking in that rough over the bunker, but now I think it's so dry and firm you're, you're going to run through it. But you're quite right, it's uh, iron for Tiger. Absolutely. But he's not pressing. No need to press at this point. Just knock it down the fairway. Easily reachable in two. Two irons. I mean, Matsuyama's hit driver. And like you say, it has narrowed up. But you still got to carry it over 300 yards to get over that big bunker. Which he did quite comfortably. But then you just run out the other side and... No real angle into the hole. That was the steam iron for Tiger. He's not really needed that driving iron. You're used to this, Graham, I know, but it must do your head in, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's not great fun. I don't think you're ever really used to standing around and waiting, I mean, the weather conditions are fantastic, there's no rain, it's not cold, it's not windy, but it's never nice just to be stood around and waiting. And I did say earlier on about, you know, he has got this neck problem. We can see the Canizo tape sticking out, or whether it's gone all the way down to his shoulder blades. It won't be good for Tiger. He will be slightly stiffening up at this point. He isn't getting any younger, like we all aren't. Now, even though he's a long way back, here at 14, possibly going in with an 8 iron, maybe a 7. Looking just to thread it through. The two bunkers near the green, not the two we can see, they're way short. You see the pin flapping away, just left of the scoreboard on the right hand side left edge of the right hand camera tower in the distance would be the perfect play he's gone oh. vertical oh he's put it in the bunker I don't know look perfect I think it's in the bunker really? Yeah, I think I'm out live no, no. oh not just in the bunker coming down from that height soft sand in there he's not gonna like that one no that is a difficult bunker shot even if it is a perfect lie these are the spectacle bunkers that block the view <laughs> less aggressive perhaps more sensible from Knox no real chance to get anywhere near that pin today. Down breeze, firm greens. But Tiger went for it. Yeah. He was getting straight at the flag, wasn't he? It looked that way. No real angle to get to the pin from this position, although a very short club, just a gap wedge.
about as good as he could do from the wispy stuff. That gives you an idea of what the spectacle bunkers are like. They'd mess with those. And look, he absolutely launched this into the sky. He, he was definitely, he was going straight at it. I don't know. Look perfect. I think it's in the bunker. Really? He did the flight another, what, 10 yards? At least 10 yards. I mean... Yeah, at least. It's in the middle of the bunker. That is the only good thing to say. He had to land it on the edge of the green to get any hope of stopping it quickly. <laughs> Foreground. The only double green here. Lots of them at St Andrews. Well, you just can't afford to get too cute with this. It would be easy to leave it in the bunker. Just got to take your medicine and try and get it to 20, 25 feet. You're going to have no real control over this golf ball coming out of this light. Take something special to get it within 10 feet. <laughs> Practicing his driver swing there. Going to really try and thump it to the sand behind the ball, slide the club underneath it somehow. You've got to attack the ball really steeply and then drag the club to the left. Really drag the butt end left as you come into the impact position. Oh, it's magic. That was as good as he could do, Julian, from where he was. Maze now he got it to go quite high out of that line. left. You only just got it high enough to get out there. So easy to leave that in the bunker. He tried to play the perfect shot. I would say nearly succeeded. It was yes. always going to be difficult. Matsuyama for his eagle. This is a really slow putt back up the hill. There's nothing really happening for Matsuyama today. Everything seems to be a grind. his par. He's made a bit of a mess of this hole. Perfectly in the fairway. Second shot too aggressive. Just have to be patient and put the ball in the right places. Well you remember in 2000 when he won at St Andrews he got round there without going in a single bunker. He's been in a few today. The bunkering here, I think, is so good. There's 112 bunkers on the course, and they're very strategically placed. Knox for the eagle. Oh, get it! His second big putt. Makes a long putt, does Russell Knox. Look good from there. Oh! If he can get it going, there will be no shortage of support for him, that's for sure. 
the Scottish fans will be out in their droves supporting Russell they'll be all wanting this man to haul this put to save his part Brooks Kepka incidentally followed up his birdie to the 13th with a birdie here at the 14th he's got it to one over Been five over. Yes, yes well done. Yeah, Tigers played the two easiest holes on the golf course in level part. So he's dropped shots to the field on the 6th and the 14th. He will be disappointed. Just played them both too aggressively. Yeah, he was uh, he was too greedy there, wasn't he? I mean, he could have found the green easily. Two putt birdie walk on. Wiped its feet from Matsuyama. First birdie. However, he's got it just before the final four holes, where danger lurks at every.